the beauty of algorithmic and quantified approach to trading is that one can easily take a trading idea or a system that they come across on the internet and objectively validate it on the market data to see if that system has any merit to it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. Hi, my name is David and you're watching Critical Trading, a channel at which I share my findings that are part of my own algorithmic trading journey. If you're in the same boat and are looking for quantified trading ideas and tips then consider subscribing to my channel now as a part of my ongoing research i came across an extremely simple seasonality trading edge in u.s stocks yes you heard that right there exists an underlying seasonality tendency in stocks as well so not just the commodities this tendency is commonly known as the end of the month effect and has been known in this trading arena for years essentially u.s equities have shown a historical tendency to go up at the end of the month. This is predominantly driven by various big institutions such as various pension funds rebalancing their stock holdings as at the end of the month. And because these institutions are mostly long only, it kind of creates this temporary uh, appreciation of stocks at the end of the month. And I believe this is something that can be used as a basis of a systematic trading strategy, such as the one I will share in today's video. Before I do that, let's go over some supporting data as always. The bar chart on my screen shows the result of a simple seasonality edge. It shows the net profit per trading day in the month, with day number one being the very last day of the month. To the left, we go as far as minus eight days, meaning eight trading days before the end of the month, and vice versa to the right. The vertical bars then show the aggregate profit if we just bought the US stock market on that day, exiting on the following day. So what we're trying to understand here is whether some days in a month have shown to be more profitable than others. By looking at the graph, we can conclude that this is the case. Day minus one, meaning one day before the last day in the month, clearly stands out. Worth pointing out is that this graph is based on the SPY data from 1995 to 2004 inclusive. This was the date range uh, used in a study that I read some time ago. This was an older study and so the dates um, are now quite far back in the past. But that's actually good as we can now validate whether this tendency prevailed on more recent data. Now switching to the out of sample data being the year 2005 up to now, beginning of June 2023, we can observe similar tendency. Day minus one shows decent degree of profitability and is in line with what we kind of expected based on the original study. Additionally, we can see that days prior to minus one are showing some potential as well. So let's convert this into a simple trading system. The code snippet on my screen comes from the trading system development software that I use that is called AmiBroker, in which the buy and sell rule based on this seasonality edge can be written over literally two lines. So what I've decided to go for is to have an entry window that would start from day minus three and end on day plus two. On the exit side, I'm going to use one of my most favorite price action exits where today's closing price is above yesterday's high. Now, this becomes a little bit clearer if we visualize it. The indicator below my price chart visualizes this time window in which we enter based on the seasonality tendency. In this case, we would start taking trades here on the day that's just been highlighted by the vertical marker up to this day plus two of the new month. After that, we would wait until the next seasonality trading window, which would be the following month starting here and again ending here. All entries and exits are made at close, which would mean that you need to execute your trades at close using the last uh, closing price of that day. And that can easily be done using Python, for example, which is how I do it myself. Also worth pointing out is that there could be multiple successive entries and exits within the same seasonality window. And that's all there's to it. Now let's have a look at the performance. Green equity curve is the simple seasonality system trading ETF SPY 
trading commissions are included, the orange equity curve is the buy and hold of the same ETF. This seasonality edge, um, despite being known for years, has shown very decent um, out of sample performance and could definitely be used to trade. I trade a variation of this myself. Now, looking at the equity curves doesn't really do the justice here. So let's have a look at some more metrics. The average annual gain is almost comparable. The metric that's important here is the time in the market. How much time is the capital being exposed in the market because the strategy is in the trade? Now, obviously with buy and hold, um, this would be at 100% because you just buy the SPY and hold it. But with this strategy, it's only about 40%. So if we then normalize the annual return by time spent in the market, the risk adjusted return is now at almost 20% compared to 8% of the buy and hold. Other way of looking at this is that the seasonality edge produced almost the same average annual return as the buy and hold, but it only needed to be in the market for 40% of the time exposing our capital in the market, whereas the buy and hold needed 100%. And how about if I use this seasonality as a filter in one of my existing strategies? Again, as expected, the headline uh, figure of average annual return will be slightly lower, while arguably the more important risk adjusted return is higher. Worth pointing out is the significant decrease in the maximum drawdown figure that could theoretically allow this system with the seasonality filter to use leverage to further increase the return potential. All in all, I'm pretty confident about the seasonality edge and I think it's a great addition to any trading portfolio. Now, before you click off this video, I recommend that you watch the one on the screen now, as I think you like it also. Thanks for watching. David at Critical Trading, signing out.